clearly the volatility has created some winners and some losers. Uh, my suspicion is there's probably people who are very happy to see Bitcoin down here or Ethereum where they can actually add. Uh, but quite bluntly, from our perspective for, for DeFi, our company, uh, volatility is often a good thing because um, you, you know we see revenues associated with buying and selling. Welcome to NAI 500 CEO interview series where we interview the CEOs of the most exciting small cap stocks in the market today. In this episode, we're interviewing Russell Starr, Head of Capital Markets of DeFi Technologies Incorporated. Some highlights of the company are, DeFi Technologies is helping to bridge the gap between traditional capital markets and decentralized finance digital assets. Over the course of six months, DeFi Technologies has invested nearly half a million US dollars in DeFi projects that have risen to a current value of nearly $1.7 million a 255% return. In June, DeFi subsidiary Valor issued a new exchange-traded product that enabled institutions and individuals to invest in the Polkadot. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us to get good information out to the market. Hi, Russell. Good to see you. How are you? I'm well, Philip. How about yourself? I'm doing great. You know, we're glad to have you uh, and DeFi Technologies with us today. We've got a lot of questions. There's lots happening in the yeah. uh, in the crypto and DeFi markets, and hopefully, you can give our viewers a good understanding of what's happening there and how that applies yeah. to DeFi Technologies as a stock. So, uh, yeah. you know, decentralized finance assets have been very volatile over the past weeks, especially with the Iron Finance situation mm -hmm. and other situations in the crypto space. You know, what are you seeing uh, on the ground at DeFi Technologies? We are a little bit unusual in as much as we're, we're launching ETNs that are, are mimicking the performance of the Polkadots, Uniswap, SushiSwap, uh, whatnot, um, as well as the Bitcoin Zero and Ethereum Zero. Clearly, the volatility has created some winners and some losers. Uh, my suspicion is there's probably people who are very happy to see Bitcoin down here or Ethereum where they can actually add. Uh, but quite bluntly, from our perspective, for, for DeFi, our company, um, volatility is often a good thing because, um, you, you know, we see revenues associated with buying and selling. We see um, staking revenues that, that often go higher as the, the underlying token goes lower. Um, so from an investment perspective in DeFi, the company, um, I think this is a just a world-class opportunity to get, get quite long. Um, I'm not sure if that addresses your question exactly, but I I, uh, I think that uh, I think it does. Well, that's a good comment, and uh, you know, DeFi Technologies has had a very active few months. We've seen numerous acquisition announcements, yep. new capital market products. Can you go over some of the most important updates and give us some color on how they will impact the company's bottom line? DeFi, in and of itself, I think is almost ahead of the markets. Um, you know, a lot of people are still struggling just to get their head around uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Uh, with with us, though, and, and with the comments that you see in the market, DeFi really makes the most sense, in my opinion. Um, you know, Ethereum, I often try to explain to people is, is like Internet 2.0 and DeFi is what's built on the back of Ethereum. And as 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 everyone knows, those Ethereum prices and the, the, the Ethereum sp spike was largely driven uh, by DeFi and, and just how quickly it's being adopted as a concept. Um, so, so for us, look, our revenues have spiked uh, on our products. A lot of people should know that, that the guy who actually created um, uh, CoinShares is the one largely behind our products, Johan Waterstrom. Um, and Diana Biggs, obviously, is ex-head of HSBC um, crypto efforts globally, you know, that's, that's an all-star team leading our products. So, so while DeFi in and of itself has been very volatile, it's actually been great for us as a company, other than clearly our stock has been under pressure because I think the world doesn't understand what we're doing yet and almost just views us solely as a crypto product. But the reality is we're a very, very functional company. So, um, you know, we've got our ETN, ETP business. Um, we have four products that have launched. We're about to launch those in Germany. Once we get access to the German market, clearly you're going to see our AUM skyrocket. We've got our treasury product, which Wooter and, and uh, Charlotte are working on diligently in the background, which, which could be a game changer because as everyone knows, the, the, um, 
the fixed income market is ostensibly broken globally because of what the Fed and other central banks are doing. So if you can actually create a stable coin version of something that will give people yield, I think that's going to go crazy and, and fly off the shelf. So that's another one of our, our products. And then and then ironically, even though you've seen some weakness in, in the crypto space in general, our venture capital business where we we literally just take small positions in in uh, at least products that we think will benefit us or the DeFi space or ecosystem moving forward, even with the sell-off, we're still returning three, four hundred percent to our investors on on you know sort of five hundred grand investment. So, all of those um, are are coming along very well. And then of course our last uh, business unit is governance, and governance, in my opinion, could be the dark horse that eclipses all of them, just because. Uh, ESG is such a dominant theme in today's market and having a governance product um, where we where we control one of the nodes that that shift um, is working to to advance uh, globally on governance could could be a huge win as well. So, you know, we suffer when the rest of the market suffers, but the reality is we're at such a discounted value uh, versus what I would call our peers. And, and, you know, we don't really have a peer. We're one of the only DeFi publicly listed companies out there. There are a couple of others. But I think we have the best management team or certainly one of the best management teams. And, and we are just beginning to create a product or a company that I think everybody's going to turn to when DeFi becomes a household name and just sort of not such a niche product as it is currently. Mm -hmm. So uh, just following on to this question uh, and your answer, uh, you have a trading product, which you alluded to earlier, or not a trading product, but a trading yep. business. Where you're trading, you know, when the when the DeFi assets go up, they go down. You're still trading and making money. Then you've yep, got yep. the product creation side, and we saw that with the Valor polka dot thing. And I'll ask you more about yep. that afterwards. And then you mentioned yep. the governance product, and that's more of is that more of an app? That Running nodes is a big business in the DeFi world, um, and we're we're actively trying to create a basket of of nodes because you you, you know that's how you you remain um, interconnected within the DeFi ecosystem is is participating in these node business and and obviously with the skill set and the people we have in the background that's that's very 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 helpful but the shift product is is an intriguing one in as much as um, the way i try to explain it to people is imagine a world where you never have to fill out a kyc again and and that's that's at the bare that's at the lowest end of the spectrum from, from what Shift is trying to do globally, but it's the easiest way for me to explain it. So, so imagine a world where, you know, you walk into any bank globally, any brokerage firm globally, and instead of having to fill out all of those documents, you just walk in and, and you show them your Shift passport. Let's just call it what, like, I'm just making this up on the go just to give people a concept of what's going on. That, that is shift but shift is effectively that on steroids and so what they're doing is taking their product to the government level to create situations where you know you 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 can validate uh, property ownership you can eliminate um, terrorist financing like well, there's a there's a big um, dominant uh, theme or, or or voice out there that's trying to suggest that you know bitcoin or uh, it is is something that is used by terrorists and the reality is that fundamentally Bitcoin is, is there to actually eliminate that. Um, and you can actually trace all the purchases of the Bitcoin. So, so if you can actually have a treasure or sorry, a governance product where, where you're actually taking that to the next level, where you can validate almost any transaction anywhere globally, um, that is a massive, massive undertaking. And one that I think, like I said, could, could be the dark horse and be our biggest revenue generating basket. Can you go over for us how that, product can generate revenues. You know, a lot of our viewers are more traditional investors in stocks. They may yeah, not yeah. know how that app, uh, how that uh, product ends up uh, meaning um, dollar revenues yeah. for the company. Yeah, so we will get what are called shift tokens. And those tokens, I think, have a value now of around two or 250. But, but as you get those tokens and you create a liquid market as all these tokens you know, trade on one exchange or another, Coinbase, Voyager, or whatnot, that's how the revenue will come in. And so it's it's almost I, I, I don't want to use the term staking because you know staking is 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 effectively a, a, a business operation in and of itself. But as you manage the node and you participate uh, on on transactions via that that node, you get paid in shift tokens. and those tokens, who knows what the value is going to be? You've seen tokens that have gone from you know zero to to one million uh, overnight. So, 
Um, you know, the market is a little bit weaker now, but I really don't see these industries or businesses going anywhere. I, th I think they're going to revolutionize um, the world moving forward. And again, the analogy I, I always say to people is, you know, I remember when email didn't exist, when the internet was just becoming sort of a household thing. A lot of people, a lot of people don't think this way because they've just assumed that it's been there forever. Um, I'm a little bit older, obviously, but but if if you're looking at Internet 2.0, which is what I believe DeFi is, built on the backbone of predominantly Ethereum, all of these business units um, should theoretically grow substantially as the DeFi world grows. Um, so you're going to have the high tide rising all boats, um, whether it be the shift tokens, whether it be DeFi ourselves, and you just we just have to get through the haze and the and the sort of garbage that's occurring right now with China cracking down on uh, crypto mining. Um, but all of that hash rate is going to be going somewhere else. So I really do think that this is just a, a short term opportunity for people to get quite a, quite a bit longer um, crypto as it as it does ref revolutionize the world. And then, of course, DeFi is actually growing even faster than that. So um, we'll get paid in shift tokens. We're obviously embarking on uh, other opportunities where we can participate in managed nodes. Uh, but like I said, you've got this diversification opportunity with DeFi in and of itself, the company that we're discussing here, where you're not just getting long governance or treasury, you're also participating in, in the VC applications, you're also participating in these products that are be, being created by the guy who literally created uh, CoinShares. And, uh, you know, you're also on the forefront of creating exchange traded products linked to DeFi assets. Yeah, that's... Those are those are what I was referencing. So yeah. so Valor is run by Diana, and then obviously Johan's one of her top lieutenants or or, or co um, executive team managers, and and we obviously own a hundred percent of that. We paid I think uh, thirty six or thirty seven million shares for it, um, for the balance of it. Um, those products are are just the the top tip of the iceberg, so to speak. So we started with Ethereum and Bitcoin Zero, which are novel products in as much as we're, we're charging no management fees whatsoever. And quite frankly, we don't understand why people are, are buying products that, that charge a management fee for this. Like there is no real need theoretically. Uh, but then I know where you're going to on this. We've also launched our Polkadot um, uh, platform, uh, ET, ETP or ETN. And, and that's an opportunity for people who instead of having to open up an account on Coinbase or Voyager or wherever, you can actually just buy our ETP for Polkadot um, on the Swedish, ex Swedish exchange. So if there's institutional investors who are looking to adopt uh, or at least participate in, in this DeFi boom, um, you know, regulation is another big uh, overarching heading that's sort of, I, I think, uh, suppressing maybe the, the price of Bitcoin or Ethereum as it tries to move higher. Um, but the reality is that having a listed equity that you can buy with these products in it, you're actually already subject to the exchange uh, exchange approval and, and the, the regulatory bodies that, that protect you with actual listed equities versus some of these other exchanges. So Look, we're, we're just starting. We have many other products we're going to launch. You, you would have seen that we just launched a product um, that will mimic the Arcane Hedge Fund, uh, which is a fund that's done extremely well in Europe. Um, we, we plan on listing numerous other DeFi-based uh, products. And, you know, you start in Sweden because that's smart business. It's easier. It's smaller. You can, you can get everything organized. But once we actually get onto the German exchanges, that's when I, I really think our company's uh, going to take off just because the AUM should grow substantially. And speaking of AUM, I mean, your company, uh, I think is value based on AUM, but the fact that you have so many products, I think that comes into, you know, and you mentioned management fees earlier, how are you making money on these uh, different products that you're issuing out there? So there's obviously execution um, uh, where, where you can you can eke out little gains. Um, staking is the predominant uh, revenue generating scenario. And a lot of people don't understand. I mean, that that's how you build the treasury product is because of that staking opportunity in the background. Um, but you you can invest in, in, and buy Polkadot and, and clip a 13% yield just by staking your Polkadot. As we launch more of these DeFi centric products um, that generate tremendous yield, uh, we'll be we'll be giving half or or not more of that yield back to the investor and keeping some for ourselves. So as your AUM grows, you're going to get incremental staking revenues. And the company I often point to 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 just show people how 
powerful this can be is Voyager Digital, which is uh, an app that you can get on your on your phone to um, trade cryptocurrencies and tokens. Um, and they were a you know a twenty five million dollar micro cap a year and a half ago, run by you know Steve Ehrlich, who's a, a genius, a, a great guy who um, had had his background and cut his teeth at E Trade and Lightspeed. Uh, but they went from 25 cents to $30 in a matter of a year based on all of the revenues from, from just trading and then also staking. Um, and that's, that's people just need to understand that, that once this starts growing and we start capturing those staking yields and the products and the AUM grow, um, this company has, has the potential to add uh, another zero uh, to, to the market cap. Russell, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We've got a lot of good questions. Yeah. I think um, you answered a lot of things that our investors are are wanting to know about, both on the company side and also on the DeFi yep. market in general. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to talk, talking to you again uh, sometime in the future. You bet. And and anybody who has questions too, Philip, um, our star at DeFi.tech, um, my cell is 647-669-9801 happy to answer questions please reach out it, it, like i said sometimes sometimes you're so innovative that you get out in front of the market which is i think where we are but but ultimately i i believe that DeFi um as an industry and DeFi as a company will will grow and, and be just a huge success moving forward thank you very much please like our video and subscribe to our channel to help us get more cutting edge stock coverage to the market